Hi everyone and welcome to the weekly update with me, Richard Perry, Market Analyst at Hentech Markets. Each week I take you through the key events that I believe will be driving your investments in the coming days. Certainly this week we're going to focus on two big fundamental events. And that first of all is the FOMC meeting on Wednesday. This meeting could well be the one where we get a change of outlook from the uh, FOMC in terms of its forward guidance. The statement the FOMC comes out with is, is poured over by the markets and there could be a change of wording. The uh, FOMC is coming towards the end of its tapering program and that may mean that it will have to change the forward guidance just to prepare the market for the next phase of monetary policy. And that means it may well take out the, the, uh, the words considerable time from the statement. That would suggest that um, the Fed is no longer saying that uh, interest rates are going to remain low for a considerable time and therefore that would uh, change the outlook of the market. Now, there are two different ways that FOMC uh, and, and central banks change monetary policy and tighten. Tightening goes when either you get uh, an inflationary scenario or when you get a growth scenario. Now, I believe that the fact that it's going to be happening when the um, US um, economic data is beginning to improve and, um, and uh, the forward-looking outlook is getting better, Therefore, I think that could be taken as a positive by the markets. And certainly the dollar has benefited off the back of this, and that has helped to push markets higher. Just in the last few days, though, the S&P 500 has come off slightly. But I, I still think that on Wednesday, if there is a change of outlook and a change of forward guidance, then maybe the markets will start to push on again. Now, the, um, the second key factor we've got to look forward to this week is this huge Scottish independence referendum vote for and how that's going to impact on UK assets across the board. Now this could, I mean, it's already had a significant impact on sterling uh, and also UK equities, but again, also gilt yields as well have started to rise as well. So there could be a, a significant amount of volatility through the week. Uh, sterling has sort of formed a bit of consolidation in the last few days, but any sort of change around in, in the opinion polls and, um, and uh, the uh, expectation of how the vote's going to go on Thursday could well move through the week. And then again on Friday, there could be significant volatility around the result. And no result would mean that, um, pro I mean, largely back to as we were, where, I mean, Sterling or, or has already fallen about 550 points from top to bottom when the, um, when the opinion poll started turning into a, a, a too close to call vote. That would seemingly have a, some sort of a, a significant retracement, but also then equities would rally as well. So if there was, however, a yes vote, now that could have just an enormous impact across the board on, uh, on UK assets. And uh, the, the uncertainty driven through political, uh, political economic and um, just general cultural differences and uh, changes that we're going to be getting um, could have a significant impact across the board. So big, big changes could be afoot on Friday if that happens. So how is this really playing into all the uh, FX markets? Well, certainly the dollar remains strong. And uh, into this week, it's been a bit of consolidation for it. But uh, just at the moment, that's being played through with certain euro dollar moving sideways in a bit of a trading range um, over the past week or so. But I think it's going to be there's going to be a significant break of the, um, of the range uh, through the middle of the week when we get this, um, this FOMC meeting out of the way. Now the uh, the supports come in at one dollar twenty eight eighty, and that needs to hold up to prevent a decline back towards one twenty seven fifty. But certainly at the moment, there's a ceiling at around about the one dollar thirty level, which is sort of also acting as the psychological resistance. But if there is a breakthrough at one dollar thirty, we could be quite quickly up towards one dollar thirty one again. Now in terms of cable, as I said, there's been significant volatility recently in cable, and um, they bit of consolidation at the moment, but certainly, again, there's a bit of um, a bit of a possible base building process. Needs to break above the $1.6280 mark. If that's seen, then it can continue the retracement back towards $1.6350 and then $1.6440 as well. So some levels there on the upside, but also the support needs to hold at that $1.6050 level. And if there is a yes vote, certainly by the end of the week, you could easily see a $1.50 handle on uh, on cable. So uh, in terms of dollar yen, huge huge gains on dollar yen in the recent week or so, 
um, big breakouts and multi-year highs again. There's nothing really holding Dollyen back until we get up towards the key high at one dollar at uh, 110.65 now. But certainly, we're now beginning to look for signs with overstretched momentum indicators. We're beginning to look for signs of a bit of uh, fatigue in this run higher. And um, at the moment, it's not really coming through yet, but uh, it could well be not too far away. Um, there's good support, however, around one dollar, sorry, 106 to 107. And I still think that uh, there's been a big change of outlook um, towards a much more bullish configuration for this uh, dolly N chart. And I think that now any sort of um, any sort of correction is uh, going to be seen as a chance to buy. So moving on to the indices, well, the S&P 500, as I said earlier, has had a slight bit of a correction in uh, in front of this FOMC meeting, but it's nicely now back into a support band between uh, 1955 and 1990. And I think that uh, any sort of bias signal in that sort of area would be considered to be another chance to get long again. Uh, in terms of the DAX, well, certainly the European indices have been held back by a, a range of fundamental issues, certainly the, um, the Russian sanctions, um, both for on Russia and given out by Russia, uh, are going to be having a, an impact and certainly holding the DAX back. Um, DAX needs to hold above the support at 9,600 to maintain the, uh, the positive recovery outlook that it's got going. But uh, in terms of FTSE, it's not so positive. There's more of a corrective outlook on FTSE. There's a, a bit of an intraday top pattern. Certainly that uh, was completed last week. If there's a close now below the 97, sorry, the 67.73 mark, that would get that would imply a move back towards 60, uh, 66.40 on FTSE 100. So there is a possible corrective um, outlook on that on that chart. And certainly held back by that Scottish independence referendum as well. And finally, on to gold. Well, the gold chart has again been held back by this strong dollar. Um, being put pressure on the downside, and also the fact that um, the geopolitical tensions have just slightly eased somewhat um, in the Ukraine and the possibility of the, the ceasefire. Um, whether this ceasefire holds or not remains to be seen, but uh, certainly at the moment the gold price remains under pressure. Just on Monday morning it started to form a bit of support, but I'm still on the outlook that having broken down below that, uh, that 1240 key support, that uh, the outlook is certainly on the bearish side and that any sort of rebound is a chance to sell. It's decent support, but um, resistance between 1240 and 1260. And I think that any sort of range around that, if you get a selling um, sell signal, then I think that that's probably a decent chance to get out again. So what are we looking out for this week? Well, we've got the uh, US industrial production numbers that come out on Tuesday. Certainly market will be looking out for the, um, the uh, uh, capacity utilization component of that number because the Fed certainly looks at that. Uh, and then on to Wednesday, we've got the uh, UK inflation data. Again, that could have an impact on sterling, but presumably the, the focus is far more on the Scottish independence vote at the moment. And also you've got the uh, German ZEW sentiment for uh, impacting on the euro on Tuesday, on, on Wednesday, sorry. On Tuesday. On Wednesday, <laughs> sorry, on Wednesday, we've got the uh, US inflation data that comes out 1.30, but the big focus, as I said earlier, will be that FOMC meeting. And then on Thursday, we've got all day, we've got the voting that happens for this uh, Scottish independence uh, referendum, and um, that result is going to come out in sometime in the morning on Friday. So, Friday morning, there could be just this huge volatility around the UK assets. And um, that's it, and I wish you good luck in your trading throughout the week. I think it's going to be a volatile one but it could well uh, give up some opportunities as well. So I wish you good luck and I'll speak to you next week. Thank you.